Welcome to the first episode in this DIY series. Today we're working on the fuel tank on my 21 foot trophy. This project has a challenge rating of 8. One morning we discovered gasoline was seeping out of the boat's drain plug. We were leaking fuel all over the driveway. I quickly rented a 12 volt fuel pump and bought some jerry cans and 150 liters of stabilized premium fuel later, the tank was empty. So with disaster avoided, I consulted the interweb oracle, asking one question, how screwed am I really? Turns out, all boats need a new fuel tank eventually, and this was inevitable. Beneath this hatch are unknown challenges that cannot be avoided. And like a root canal, it is going to happen. But it'll feel a lot better when it's over. On the starboard side, we can see the tank and the stringer that surrounds it. The hull appears free of any visible damage. Here is the forward bulkhead and the front of the tank. Notice the strapping and the spacer holding the tank in place. The black foam above the tank is a liner between the upper and lower sections of the boat. One of my immediate concerns is the condition of the stringers, but they look solid. The junction between the stringer and the bulkhead looks clean and intact. For now I'm optimistic. At least the holes through the stringer for the support straps were protected with gel coat. I'm sure that there's a better way to install the new tank than this. You can see where the fish lockers were removed and glassed over. The wider I make the hole, the more access there is for the repair. There is a 2 inch by 3 inch support beam that runs across the top of the tank. This beam gives structural stability to the deck and sits directly under the steps on each side of the boat. Cutting this beam is unavoidable. By hooking my tape on the edge of the tank, I'm able to mark the tank and the stringer on the deck above. Measuring the rear of the tank has a special surprise. The tank is tucked under the engine well and will not lift directly out of the hole. This is going to complicate things without question. We're going to have to look a little closer at this. Here's the rear of the tank, the vent hose to the left, the intake and filler hoses to the right. We need the tank to slide two inches forward or we have to cut further back into the engine well. The white strip at the front of the tank doesn't appear to offer much forward movement. And we have to get as close to that rubber liner as we can without cutting it or the bulkhead. Here you can see where the fish lockers were removed and non-skid texture applied. Notice the position of the 2x3 and the forward bulkhead. We can clearly see the edge of the fish lockers, so the side cuts will be simple enough. The stringer is well below the tank, so I'm not concerned about cutting it. We should be able to reach the outside edge of the stringer tab area for better access on the deck. I will take more measurements to confirm the exact placement of the bulkhead. With the 30 degree miter, reinforced resin, tabbing and multiple layers of 1708, the deck will be stronger than ever. As for the rear tank issue, I hope not to cut into the engine well, but these old rod holders have to go. Notice how Bayliner left a smooth area over the bulkhead at the factory. In order to maintain a 4 inch tab, here is where I'll have to cut, but it doesn't leave much room for the tank to lift out. Thank you. 
I want non-skid on the deck, steps, storage lids, and floor in the cabin. Eventually, the top edge of the gunnels. Non-skid in gel coat uses a flexible mold, is best for small repairs, and is very expensive. Sprinkle on textures and paint are hit and miss, but soft sand rubber responds well, is much cheaper, and is suitable for the different places needing non-skid. The plan is to grind and sand the surface and radius of the entire deck, tabbing this four inch return all the way around. The cracks will be repaired and corners reinforced using structural putty, chop strand, and fairing compound. It would be wise to replace the non-skid on the steps while we're at it, but there are issues. The port step has a hatch that once held a washdown hose. Unprotected plywood caused the step to rot around the hatch. This hose fitting has to go and the hole repaired making this a larger project. So for now, I'll concentrate on the starboard side and apply the same non-skid. I think we're ready to cut a hole in the deck. I used a reciprocating saw to cut through the 2x3 and the lid came off easily. The 30 degree miter reveals the coring material is made of foam. This makes me very happy. Here we see the two bands that hold the tank in place and that the filler fitting doesn't clear the opening. Working on a boat is all about problem solving and tools. It's about tools. Even though the tank is hitting the forward edge, the filler fitting has to come forward. 
I'm going to have to cut a bigger hole. I wanted four inches for tabbing, but I'll have to settle for two. I removed the strip from the forward bulkhead, but it's only a half an inch thick. It appears to be dry and free of rot and corrosion. That's a good sign. Despite the second cut, the tank remained stuck. Lifting with a toe strap, I couldn't get enough leverage to pop it free. The filler fitting had just enough clearance, but the tank was wedged in. I needed some help. Luckily for me, a friend with a forklift came to my rescue and helped me pull the tank. These corrosion spots are from water sitting against the rubber strips. Any water allowed to sit against the aluminum will cause pitting. Here is where the tank sat in the rotted plywood drain. The stained band is where it sat against the stringer. Our first look inside the tank area shows the stringers appear to be damage free. The forward bulkhead looks dry and intact. We see the thin rubber spacer strips and the support banding that held the tank in place. The support holes in the stringer are well coated with gel coat, which is very encouraging. I expect to fill these holes and mount the tank with tabs, not bands. The aft bulkhead has not rotted out despite the moisture and the minimal protective fiberglass. Unfortunately, we only have access to one side of this bulkhead. On the port side, the interior hull outside the tank area looks dry and damage free. We can see the horizontal line where the tank made contact with the sides of the compartment and the aft drainage area that rotted out where the tank corroded and ultimately failed. What's with the battery compartment? Let's take another look. Those stains are probably battery acid, sulfuric acid gas that condensed and settled below the battery. It will never evaporate or wash away. This is a serious issue and left untreated, it will slowly eat through everything. This is common to almost every boat to some degree and will have to be fixed. The multi-tool makes short work of the thin layer of fiberglass installed at the factory, and I easily avoid cutting into the hull. The underside is untreated and saturated with water. This is the stark reality of owning a 30-year-old boat. The lower layer is not bonded to the hull, is untreated and saturated with water and fuel. This is clearly the major cause of the tank failure. I will have to clean up the drain passage and separate the fuel tank from the wet zone and allow for proper drainage and airflow around the tank. Every time I use the multi-tool, I feel more confident about the job ahead. But we have a lot of material to remove. So it's time to grind. I will remove all the grind and the old gel coat down to the base fiberglass. The 40 grit flap wheel will make an excellent mechanical bond for the repairs. The dust is incredibly nasty, so I want to get this phase completed all at once.
The bulkheads and stringers need tabbing, glass, and bilge paint. And there's exposed wood from a strake that needs reinforcement. On the water, this part of the hull can hit very hard coming off the top of a steep wave, so I'll definitely address this. You can see how thin the glass was installed in 1993. Three or more layers of 1708 will greatly extend the life of this boat. The added glass and room needed for airflow has me concerned about the size of the replacement tank. I will have to complete all of the repairs prior to ordering a new tank. I removed the gel coat between the bulkheads as far as I could easily reach. The exposed wood from the strake is clearly visible. There isn't a lot of glass there. The battery box has issues as well. A little more grinding around the battery boxes and we'll be ready for cleaning, acetone and radius sanding. Get, 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 get.